If I can, you can. I, I think you're safe. Fair enough. There you go. Um, I want to welcome everyone uh, today. Uh, thank you guys for coming. I know that it's a uh, busy time of year for all of you. I'm sure all of you had other plans to be home this evening with your families celebrating the 50th anniversary of the premiere of Star Trek. Um, if, if you weren't planning on that, your kids are obviously getting an F this year. You know, I just want to be upfront about it. Um, just uh, before we get started, a couple of points here. There are no handouts. Uh, we went uh, paper-free, except for all the paper that's out there. But otherwise, we're paper-free. Um, all the information is on our class website. Uh, please remember to sign up for a parent-teacher conference time before you leave. You can always do it later. But if you do it now, I don't have to uh, bug you later on. Uh, there are two parent surveys on our class website that I'm hoping you can fill out. I know that they're long. I know it's a pain. But it helps me to get to know your kids better. And also, it gives me all of your contact in, uh, email addresses so that I can make a mailing list. Uh, feel free to put in things like, hey, use this one. This is my work email address. Use it if you need me during the day. But otherwise, use my home email address. Things like that really help me out. And I try to respect all that. Um, I'm looking for volunteers to teach junior achievement. It is a ton of fun. They give you all the training you need, all the materials. It's a great opportunity. If you're interested, I'd uh, love to have a volunteer. I am on Twitter. Uh, if you have a Twitter account, at Moss Teaches. Uh, but I'll tell you more about that in a little later. Our new librarian, Ms. Kelleher, is looking for volunteers for the school library, so please consider signing up. The PTO is looking to have you sign up for other things. Uh, and also to have you check the directory information that I left at your kids' desks, uh, just to make sure it's accurate. And if it is, please leave it. No need to take it home with you. Um, and yeah, if you've actually read it, congratulations. You've stayed awake. It's only going to get worse from here. So welcome to fourth grade. Uh, I hope I've gotten to introduce myself to all of you. I'm John. Um, your children this year, by the way, I should have opened with this. Your children are in a great situation. They are in a classroom with, uh, what are we at now? I'm calling it one, two, three, four, five teachers uh, as I introduce it to the kids. We have a paraprofessional, Jessica uh, uh, Oslander. She's, uh, the kids know her as Miss O, and she's in the room. Mrs. Rafferty, one of our special educators, is also in the room. They rotate through. Um, OK, four teachers. And uh, Mrs. Williard is our fourth grade teaching assistant. And she's going to be in all the rooms. And the way I explain to the kids is, you're in a room with four teachers. I don't use the term helper teacher. As far as the kids are concerned, there are four teachers in the room. And that's a really important piece uh, in our class. And it really helps our classroom to be uh, even more successful. Um, you know, I always say, would somebody please wave your hands? But Logan, I think this is by definition your job three times running now. So will you be my hand waver? You're always the one who volunteers. Oh, so. you're, yes, you're my official hand waver for this. Um, so I have to uh, ask you to forgive me right off the bat. Uh, one year somebody said to me, do you always speak this fast when you're teaching the kids? And, and I had to explain, no, no, I don't always speak this fast. I'm just trying to get in a lot. So I don't know if any of you remember the uh, John Mighty Mouth Machida, the FedEx commercial, who's also the Micro Machine guy. So I will try not to go too, too fast, but just know that I don't talk that fast in front of the kids. So. So there's a lot of information on our class website, www.mossteaches.us. And that can be a really great resource for you guys to get more information. I'm really going to focus on things that aren't as clear just to put up as a document or a page on our website. What's new at Pine Grove this year? First thing that we're starting new, this is a brand new program for our whole school, something called Targeted Instruction. It's similar to our SRBI blocks from years past where some of your kids may have gotten intervention services. But it's something that we're expanding now to the entire grade and to all the grades in the building. And we're going to work toward a model in which students will visit a classroom for targeted instruction focusing on that student's needs. The way it's going to work is this year our specials block is from 1020 to 1110 in the morning. From 1115 to 1145, we're going to have targeted instruction where every single fourth grader is in a classroom. It may be mine and it may be another one working on a skill that's right for them. And for kids who are struggling, we're going to address some of those skills. For kids that need an enrichment activity, we're Going to, going to address those skills. For kids that need extra time to complete a work, we'll have a space available for them. So we're really going to look to meet everyone's skills in different ways. And what's great is we have members of our team uh, who are going to work on that. We're going to have our new library media specialist working in that group. We're going to have our TA working in that group. We're going to have some of our interventionists working. So it's going to be a really great way to get a lot of teachers at one time pulling kids so that we can meet everyone's needs. Um, 
you're going to see ongoing changes to what we're offering. We want to make sure, of course, we're addressing what's in the curriculum. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll see addition and subtraction. We'll see narrative elements. And as the year goes on, well, fraction groups, we're going to always adjust to cover what we're focusing on in class. Our library model has also changed this year. In the past, you know, the kids went to the library. They saw Mrs. McCabe. They checked out books. Twice a week, they'd have library time. This year, we have a new library uh, media specialist, Ms. Caitlin Kelleher. You may have met her uh, as you came in this evening. And our library media model has changed quite a bit this year. Uh, Ms. Keller is pushing into our grade daily, like I said, during that targeted instruction time once we have that up and running. And she's going to be working much more closely with our team. She's also going to have increased focus on technology integration. Kids are still going to have library book checkout time. It's going to be less frequent. It's going to be on a monthly basis this year instead of a weekly basis, but they're going to get to check out more books to keep them up and running. And we also have a new leveled library collection, and that's going to be a really great thing. We have some, uh, new software that's leveling all the books in the library, and what's great about that is then when a student comes to us and says, gee, I don't know what to pick, we'll know what that student's independent reading level is, so that we can really encourage them to find a book that's a good fit for them. So core instruction, we have language arts. Some of our main instructional methods include whole class instruction, of course, as we're all familiar with. We also do guided reading or strategy groups. That's small group differentiated instruction to meet students' needs. Reader's Workshop is a model which can really go through all of these different roles. Reader's Workshop is when I introduce a, a skill with a short mini lesson for the whole class. Kids practice that skill either with partners or independently while I'm meeting with small groups, and then they're able to apply that skill independently. And we also have learning stations, so during some of those times, hi there, come on in, that's fine. So during some of those times, we'll have students working at different learning stations around the classroom, whether it's on reading, writing, spelling, word choice, math, science, social studies, so many different areas. I want to take a moment to introduce Mrs. Rafferty. She's one of our teachers on the fourth grade team. She'll be in the classroom uh, every couple days doing a variety of different activities. <laughs> we have a lot of ways that we measure your students' progress. And the main one, I'm actually going to go totally out of order. Teacher, uh, I'm sorry, informal assessments, a.k.a. me looking at how your kids are doing. That's something that I'm doing all day, every day, just monitoring that progress. But in terms of formal evaluations, we have DRAs that we administer uh, three, uh, two to three times a year. And it's an individual test that we give to kids. Is the door locked? Is that locked? Sorry. 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 The DRA we give twice a year, and it's an individual assessment that we use to uh, find students' independent and instructional reading levels. So we give them a test, we see how they do with their oral reading as well as their comprehension, and then from looking at it, we can say this is that their level, or hmm, we're going to test them at a slightly more advanced level to see if that's right for them, or at a slightly more basic level to see what's right for them. That helps us to also look at instructional focuses for them and to find that reading level that we can use when we're in the library and in other cases. The degrees of reading power assessment is an assessment that we give to measure student comprehension. It's with those blanks. It's something we all did, where you have a sentence, there's a blank, and five words that can fit in. And that's another good measure of our reading comprehension. We have universal assessments that we give uh, two times, three times, two times a year. And the universal assessments, the way I like to describe it is when you go to the doctor, what's the first thing they do? They take your blood pressure, they weigh you, they take your temperature, they do it for everyone. It just gives you that quick picture of, hey, how you doing? and then you look more closely. Universal assessments we give to every single student in the building, and it lets us get quick general pictures. We never make decisions about instruction just from one of these. We're going to look at all that information together in order to decide what's the best way to provide whole class instruction and individual instruction. Continuing looking at language arts, our major focus here is short answer responses. So much in the younger grades, we're focusing on, did you understand what you read? Do you have factual recall of what happened? And really, in fourth grade in particular, and started in third grade, I taught it for many years, but in fourth grade in particular, we're really focusing on short answer responses to text, that critical response, that critical analysis. Do you agree with what this character did? Why or why not? What's a question that you would ask the author if you had the opportunity to meet him or her? And explaining why. Choosing that evidence from the text to support your answer, because that's a key life skill finding, okay, how am I going to really support what I'm saying? We also are going to be using a lot of Google Classroom and Google Docs. I tell you this right now because uh, I don't want you to get in the habit of looking in your child's backpack, looking in their homework folder, geez, where's all your work? Where's your reading and where's all your writing? And I'm not seeing it. 
so much of the reading and writing work that we do in school is going to be done on the kids' Chromebooks, like you use for scheduling parent-teacher conferences. There's not going to be a great deal of that coming home on paper. So I want you to get into the habit of checking your child's Google uh, Classroom accounts, because that's where you're going to be able to see their work, and it's also where you're going to be able to see my feedback. My feedback could either be on the main page where there's a grade and teacher comments, but especially if it's a piece of writing, more often than not, you're going to find that my comments are right there in their actual writing at the bottom. It'll say comments from Mr. Moss, and it may have some scores in there also along with my feedback. But that's really a habit that you want to get into. Google Classroom is something they can show you, and what I tell the kids is that you, as their parents, should always have their username and password for their Google email, Google Classroom, Google Docs, Google Apps, there it's all the same login. You should always have that information. If they ever say, no, I'm supposed to keep that password private, you get to say, ah, uh, uh, Mr. Boss said no. And then you get to email me so to throw them onto the bus so that I can yell at them too. Those are perks of parenthood, right? Uh, this is also different language arts from third grade because we're not using the anthology as much. I know in third grade the kids used a lot of the texts from the anthology and then did a variety of activities based on it. We're not going to use them a lot this year. We use a variety of different mentor texts with the kids. We're going to be working with major pieces of literature and we're also going to be working with more nonfiction work as a major focus because the reality is when we're doing our uh, skills as adults, how often do any of us do narrative fiction writing in our day-to-day -day lives. Most of what we do is nonfiction, whether we're emailing a coworker with information, making plans for a family outing. It's nonfiction kinds of work. So that we're going to be focusing on that quite a bit this year. Spelling is based on the thematic list of words. Oh, we got to kick the tie here. Uh, thematic list of words which come from the week's instruction. So you're going to see variations in spelling. Some weeks there'll be a few more words, some weeks there'll be a few less. Some weeks there'll be a lot of math words because we're starting a new math unit, and then other weeks maybe it'll shift to something else. It really varies every single week based on what we're covering in class at that time, and it's based on our in-class work. So for writing, like I said earlier, there's a much greater focus on expository writing and citing information. And I had this great line here about writing rubrics are available online, and then I went to our class website just to make sure everything was updated, got the schedule updated. If any of you were looking for the special schedule, I apologize, it's now current. And I looked at our writing rubrics, and yikes, they were the old ones. So I'm going to update those, and it'll all be available online, because I know you all were going to go run home and download the writing rubrics. Um, but take a look also for those writable moments. You know, that's a, a big question that a lot of parents ask me is, how can I help my son or my daughter to improve their writing? And especially if we're talking about that narrative writing, that story writing, that descriptive writing, it doesn't have to be a big thing where you're encouraging your son, hey, why don't you, you know, take an hour and sit down and write a story? Because that's a big process for kids. That's something we spend weeks working on for a single story. Break it into small chunks. You know, you go on vacation, you see this beautiful view. Hey, here's my phone. Why don't you email grandma, tell her what you're seeing right now. Why don't you text your friend about this cool thing that we just did? And you know, think about how you're going to describe how you felt as you were doing it. Short snippets, because that's the best way for them to get that practice. Little mini pieces that then they can get into the habit of developing so that when they need to do their writing, they can stitch it together into a complete piece. In math, I'm going to go through this more quickly because you guys know that in math we focus on the common core standards, and here they are. I hope you all have them memorized. We also focus on mathematical practices, and there's, uh, what do I have, eight of them right here. And the reality is even though you're thinking, okay, great, more stuff here, these are really important because they teach kids the ideas behind how do I tackle a problem, a mathematical problem? How do I, you know, figure out, okay, is my strategy for solving this reasonable? How do I figure out how I'm going to understand what the question's asking me and stick through it until I get the answer. How am I going to figure out if I'm using the tools the right way in order to get the answer? Because we can all whip out a calculator. It doesn't mean that just because we know how to use the calculator that we're going to get the right answer. We use a lot of Encore for our math lessons. It's something you may remember from third grade, but we also use everyday math, we use Singapore math, Engage New York, a variety of resources. So you're going to see that periodically our homework is going to change its format. But one of the things that I want to stress to you is I try and bring in a lot of real-world connections to what we're doing in math because math has the potential to be a really isolated field, you know, that you're learning just this skill. And we want kids to see the examples of how it could work. So today, for example, we were working on place value and we were trying to get the kids to understand that there are many names for different numbers. So we hopped onto the Apple website because if any of you guys are as geeky as I am, you know that yesterday Apple announced the iPhone 7. 
So we were looking, we were shopping for which model we wanted, and obviously we have to pick the good one, only the best for us in room 209. And so we found an iPhone that when we rounded it up with text, we said it's $800. And I said, okay, you're going to go into Apple, they're really busy, you're going to pay with a single kind of bill. You can be with however many of them it takes, but you got to stick with one kind. And so we were saying $800, I could pay with 800 singles, with 80 tens, with 800s. We want to give that context to it so it's not just, hey, what are other ideas for 800? What are other ways to express the number 800? Because that's a really abstract concept. We want to make it as concrete as we can for the kids. Students need to master their multiplication facts. I actually, in the future, I may even take this out of the math section because memorizing math facts is not a mathematical skill. We don't want kids doing math. When they have to figure out 7 times 6, I don't want kids doing the mental math of 7 times 6. I'm really happy when they're able to do it. That's actually good mental math. But we want them to just know 7 times 6 equals 42 without having to get that math computed in their head. And that's really a big focus. We could, we're going to work on them a little bit in school, but that's one of those things where really the only way to learn it is to sit there and practice it until you learn it. And that's going to be a big piece for them to work out at home. Uh, math also, we have the universal assessments to supplement the unit assessments like I spoke about earlier. In science, we have three units of study, but it's going to be changing a little bit this year. Stay tuned for updates to our science curriculum this spring. We're working on some new updated units, and I'll tell you guys, the curriculum writer for fourth grade for the science units is a real expert. He's also a really snappy dresser, and um, I mean, he's totally celebrating Star Trek's anniversary tonight with his box socks. He's a great guy, so I think you're really going to enjoy what he puts together, I hope. And if not, complain to Mr. G. So in social studies, it's embedded in our ELA unit. We do focus quite a bit on math skills, on US regions, states and capitals. You're going to see those included with the week's spelling lists. We also have a social studies cross-curricular learning station for when we are doing those rotations. And we have it into, integrated into reading, particularly with that shift toward nonfiction texts. Students are going to build their research skills as they study each of the different regions, rather than just reading a chapter out of our hardcover uh, textbooks. They're going to be doing research using some of the materials that I provide them, and each student group is going to focus on a different area. Geography, uh, the economy, uh, history, attractions, culture, food, and they're going to be teaching the rest of the class. It's called uh, jigsaw groups. They're going to be the experts on their area, and they're going to teach the rest of the class that so that there's shared responsibility. We want to make sure that we're helping your kids the way they need. We talked before about that targeted uh, instruction block, and that's part that's using our SRBI approach. With the SRBI, we're going to make sure that we give that tier one support to 100% of the students. Tier one is, oh, hey, I taught something. It's tough for you. OK, we're going to work together on it. That's available for everyone. Tier two, typically 5 to 10% of students need that additional support. And that's usually three, uh, two to three times a week for about half an hour. Tier three support, one to five percent of students. And that's something where it's a daily support that's provided uh, to each uh, student. Uh, we're talking about the scientific research-based intervention, and we all talked about that. In terms of educational technology, we do a lot with flipped instruction where there's a video that the kids can watch at home in order to prepare for a lesson. And that, instead of just giving them a random homework assignment or in addition to it, it gives us more in-class time if they've already had the in uh, introduction at home. It leaves more time in class for me to work with students and go over different skills. We have our smart board. You can see right here, we just got it up and working. I don't know if the kids have told you about the smart board challenges. It's very major for them, but now I think we're good. Uh, we have a document camera that we use to project student work. We have the Chromebooks, of course, Google Apps for Education we talked about. We have our class website, mossteaches.us. Get it? Get it? Uh, our class schedule is on there, class policies, curriculum information is on the district website, parent resources rubrics. The website is written down on the line paper that you guys have at your seats. Feel free to take it with you. But please keep me in the loop about what are the things that you would like to see uh, on our class website, because I want to make sure I'm adding things that are of interest to you. Um, they're occasionally, or actually, they're frequently going to be online assignments for kids to complete at home. And I'm telling you this now, if there's an old laptop that they can use to log in to do their homework, that's always helpful. If you're thinking of maybe a Chromebook for a holiday gift, that would be a good way to go for them to be able to get that access. iPads work fine too, other tablets. But that is something that they're going to routinely need to do. Um, we use a uh, methodology in Avon called Capturing Kids' Hearts, and it's a program by the Flipping Group, and there's no way for me to describe it without it sounding cheesy. I mean, you're probably looking like, oh my goodness, Capturing Kids' Hearts, oh. I have to tell you guys, it is an incredibly rich program. It teaches teachers, the best way that I can describe it is how to communicate with people 
in a way that helps everyone to have a voice. It helps everyone to feel validated. I know it sounds even cheesier now, doesn't it? But take my word for it. It's a really uh, critical part of our class. It helps us to develop our social contract. We're working on it now. And we come up with, we have a process. We have four questions that we go through to develop words that describe how everyone wants to be treated in class. And that's really helpful because instead of me going up to somebody and saying, hey, you know, Mikey, I asked you three times not to talk while I'm teaching. We have a group of kids here. You're interrupting kids. Go back to your seat. Instead of being a punishment, I could go up to Mike and say, yeah, hey, Mikey, before, when we made our social contract in September, you promised to, I don't have all the things memorized. Last year, I could point to the right spot automatically. You, know, you promised to be respectful of everyone. And I'm not feeling respected when you're talking to your friend while I'm teaching. And you're also not really showing respect to your other classmates. We want everyone to feel like they can focus on their work. And when you're talking, other people can't focus. So I want them to be able to succeed. So I'm going to ask you to go back to your seat so that everyone else can concentrate. So it turns into a learning experience rather than a yeah experience. We do a program uh, with uh, the Bridge Family Centers in Avon called Mindfulness, where we teach kids how to think about how they're feeling about a situation and how they can make sure that they're staying calm, get their grounding, get their footing. I know, again, it sounds kind of cheesy, but it was the single most valuable thing that I did in my class last year. It changed the way the class worked. It made us more efficient with our use of time. It helped kids to resolve their conflicts more independently. It was a really great program. Take a leap of faith. We're going to start it again. You're going to hear great things from your kids, I promise. We start each day with a morning meeting. That should be familiar to you. We have teams that work to earn points. I'm going to kick it into high gear because I know I'm keeping there. Chance tickets for individual successes. We want to uh, reward class-wide successes. We want to record successes within a group where kids are working to be the best that they can in their desk groups. But I also want to acknowledge kids that are successful themselves and we give them chance tickets that they can uh, turn in for a raffle. When there's a problem, like I said, a logical consequence. It's not going to be, Mikey, you were mean to this kid, so you're on the wall during recess because on the wall during recess, it means this kid don't relate to one another. We're going to come up with consequences that really fit what the problem is to, again, make it an opportunity for them to learn and grow. Homework and projects, kicking into high gear. You guys know the routine, 30 to 45 minutes of nightly homework. We want them to read each night, practice those math facts, those spelling words. Again, we're going to include a lot of technology-based homework. Homework is intended to reinforce daily activities or to set the stage for an upcoming lesson. And what I mean by that is that when I'm giving homework, it's going to tie into what we did in class. It's either going to tie into what we did in class or it's going to get everyone ready for the next day. And that's a really important piece. So if, let's say, uh, probably tomorrow or Tuesday, we're going to start planning those summer memory projects, that's a writing activity. We're brainstorming. That doesn't lend itself to a homework piece. So I'm not just going to give you a, hey, common and proper nouns worksheet to go home just like give homework. I may say, hey, guess what? We don't have a language arts homework for tonight. It doesn't mean that your kids didn't copy their homework. It means that that's what we did. It doesn't mean we didn't do anything in class. It's because I want to make sure that I'm respecting the kids' time, and I want them to really spend it on work that's valuable for them. Um, parents should set limits for homework. If you're finding that it's routinely taking your kids an hour, hour and a half to get their homework done, don't wait until parent conferences to tell me. Say that. And so you all can say to your kid, hey, you've worked really hard on this. We're done for tonight. I'll shoot Mr. Moss an email and let him know. I don't want kids coming in so fast. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Moss, I spent forever. That's something that I would like you guys to do. Just shoot me an email and let me know, hey, this took my kid a while. We stopped after, you know, 50 minutes. Or, hey, past couple of days it's really been an issue. What do you think? How's he doing in class? Let me know so that we can work on it together. Um, lead policy is a real simple one. If it's once in a while, no big deal. We all have make mistakes. If it becomes a habit, I'll reach out to you and we'll promise all from there. Uh, help is acceptable. A lot of parents ask about, you know, what's the rule about uh, me helping my son or my daughter with their homework? And you're welcome to. All that I ask is that if your kid needs help with their homework, drop me a little note. Uh, or better yet, send me an email and let me know because sometimes the kids appear to correct their work. Let me know that they need a bit of help, and that's fine. You're always welcome to. Uh, long term projects can take many forms in class. For communication, please email is always preferred. That's how I can get back to you in a most timely manner. Occasionally, there are situations where you need to get in touch with a teacher in an immediate way. I'm not talking about, hey, my kid left the homework at home, or, hey, I have a question about how to do this project. I'm talking one of those real emergencies that happen once in a lifetime for kids. If there's an emergency where you need the support of the school at any hour, that's your email address where you reach out to me. It uh, comes through as a text message for me, so please give me your name and your phone number and what the quick situation is, and I get back to you as soon as I'm able to. 
um, please, like I said, that's for one of those really rare emergencies. Um, but feel free. Uh, it may change because I may change how my website is set up. Uh, there are lots of information. There's lots of information on the website. So I'll send out those notifications. But I need that email address. So again, please hop on our class website and uh, fill out that survey so that I can get uh, everyone's email address. Uh, please uh, feel free to follow our class website on Twitter. Uh, Moss, at Moss Teaches. Basically, the way I do it is I put big updates on units of study or major projects on our class website, and then I'll do smaller updates on, hey, here's what we're working on today. Hey, we just learned this. Hey, ask your kids about such and such. That's something that I'll do on Twitter. The Twitter feed is embedded on our class website, but if you have a Twitter account, I'd love to have followers. The best way to get me uh, to tweet more and to keep you in the loop of what we're doing is for you to like what I'm doing or for you to uh, follow me on Twitter so that I know that somebody's actually looking. Uh, that information on survey, I think I've beaten that dead horse. And is anyone still awake at this point? <laughs> I know we had a, a lot of information there. We started a little bit late. I was hoping uh, we'd get some more folks in. Um, but that's everything. Can I answer any questions for any of you? Really? Nothing? You're all asleep. That's what it is. <laughs> John, the content of what you um, present tonight going to be on the website? Uh, the slideshow will be up, and we're uh, live broadcasting this. So uh, once the link is ready on YouTube, I'll embed it in there uh, for anyone that wasn't able to make it. Or if you enjoyed this so much that you want to watch it again and again and again, we'll be all set. Pass dismissed. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Reach out to me anytime. No, please leave the uh, orange uh, projects. We're going to hang them up in the hallway. Just wanted to share it with everyone. Leave it there, please. Thanks, everyone.